Hi, I'm Stu Greenberg, Chief of Police for the Tustin Police Department. Tustin Police Department has always enjoyed a rich and proud tradition of community engagement and community partnership. We work together and stand together with the community we serve. During recent events throughout the nation and throughout the world, one thing has become very apparent. It's never been more important to take that relationship with the community to the next level. We at the Tustin Police Department will not tolerate racism. We will not tolerate bigotry. We will not tolerate hatred of any kind, just like we won't tolerate criminal activity and violence. So as we discuss the best way to engage our community, given the current restrictions with the pandemic, we decided a video series would be the best way to approach it. As we were having those discussions, unbeknownst to us, one of our sergeants, Sergeant Robert Nelson, had filmed his own version of a message he wanted to put out from his unique perspective. Sergeant Nelson put this video together at home. I think he used his cell phone. It was unplanned, it was unrehearsed, and it was unscripted. In his mind, it might've been out of policy, but in his mind, it was important enough that he wanted to get the message out that he would stick his neck out for the greater good. And we're glad he did. The message was not out of policy and he spoke from the heart. And we at the Tustin Police Department think it's important that you hear this message. We appreciate you taking the time to be with us, to watch this important video, and to be a part of the coming days and weeks as we reintroduce ourselves to the community. Thank you. All right, so today I had a door slammed in my face and I was called a murderer. I was told all I do is kill innocent people. And the person who said those things is the same lady that I helped two years ago when she was scared to go home because of her abusive boyfriend. She forgot that I was the one who escort, escorted her home, walked her into her house, uh, provided insight, helped her get a restraining order. In fact, I even checked on her several hours later that day and made sure she was still at ease. But today, none of that mattered. And to be honest, my feelings weren't even hurt because I don't work in Minneapolis where the officers who are not involved are getting it handed to them a thousand times worse than I did. I would have loved to do this in full uniform, but because of certain policies and me sharing my personal opinion, um, it's just safer that way. A lot of my Compton folks and my police folks will see this, so I just wanted to share a little bit of perspective. Now, I'm currently a sergeant and I've always been black. Notice that I didn't say but, um, and that was intentional. That's because I'm not trying to validate one over the other or contradict the other. It's just what I am. And my foundation as a person and the person that I am today, it comes from urban black America. And what I've seen growing up is more traumatic than what I've seen as a police officer for almost six years now. One of the reasons Mr. Floyd died was because of that officer's ego and pride. He died because although the right thing to do was place a handcuffed person in a recovery position, which is on his or her side, those officers didn't want to give in to the demands of the public surrounding him. They didn't want to seem inferior. And for that moment in time, they didn't think about the worst case scenario of how this could affect their family or their job or even Mr. Floyd. Once you become a cop, you gotta check your ego and pride every time you suit up. Now, is this about race or is this about training? Um, I personally believe this may have played out differently if George was not black, but I believe more that if the crowd around him were not black, it most certainly would have played out differently. It seems like for those officers conceding to them, to those people around him, they would have took it as a loss. And although you may not know it, I won't use that. And all you, and although you know it, I won't use that former officer's name. Um, he doesn't get that satisfaction from me. More importantly, his children's lives have changed already and will forever be affected enough already. 
But, so I'm not going to tell anyone how they should express their frustration. It's not my place. Rioting in African-American culture goes as far back as Nat Turner revolting against slave traders and slave hunters. It was done in the 20s, the 60s, the 70s, the 90s. I won't justify that, and I'll be sure to teach my kids that there's other way to affect change. And although I despise the destruction of your own neighborhood and the devastation it caused to the business owner's livelihood, I'm reluctant to say that I get it. But that behavior comes with consequences. It gives more fuel and ammunition to conservative America to paint you as self-destructive creatures. The people who stand in the middle of which side they're going to support, um, they're going to tend to go to the other side because they don't understand or can relate to why you would do such things to voice your frustration. And lastly, but certainly not least, it gives the timidest cop the most to the most collective cop, more reason to handle you with caution. Uh, now, black people, this is where we nearly fail, or at least we could do a better job. We're very vocal about our current political environment when it comes to separatism or divisiveness. And a lot of you are frustrated with the current administration because of those things. But as a culture, we perpetuate that same ideology when it comes to interaction with law enforcement. Many of you may say that it's justified and that's okay, but we should try to acknowledge some of our shortcomings. An idiot with a plan can be the genius without a plan. I think we just need to have a plan. And you also need to know that cops that I've never heard voice their opinions about officer involved situations that results in deaths, specifically black deaths, have expressed such a strong and loud disdain for what occurred. They're just as mortified as you, but you don't see it or hear it much because they're not in your circle of influence. Speaking from my own work experience, I love my job. I love the people I work with, the people I have worked with. I know their hearts and I'm so comfortable with their values. They would die for a stranger without hesitation and they would hunt down the coldest most heartless criminal so he or she can be held accountable. But I'm also not naive. Now here's why we fail in law enforcement. Um, I believe that a police force should try to employ people who look and have similar experiences to the community they serve without lowering their standards. You can't keep hiring these cookie cutter people with limited experience on perfect backgrounds who never have comfortably dealt with the physical confrontation and not hiring people who overcame challenges and can no doubt do the job other than minor issues in their background. Now, this is probably an unpopular thought from my law enforcement peeps, but the media plays a huge role in this. Um, they've demonized and sensationalized the black male so much through film advertisement, etc., that everyone grows up with the fear they're willing to accept or not of the need to handle black men with caution that they wouldn't otherwise have to do with someone from another race. In my mind, that's not racism, though. Um, that's being a victim of a misinformed rhetoric that is massively distributed in every avenue of our lives. I'll say this because I, I don't want you to get disappointed when this thing is all said and done. But don't be surprised if he's not convicted of murder. Not because he's not responsible for Mr. Floyd's death, because he is, he killed him. But I don't know how the statue of murder reads in Minnesota, but the events that occurred that day do not demonstrate the text of what murder is in California. He's probably looking at second degree murder at best, but more than likely manslaughter under the color of authority. Now, I can't control that, neither can you, but murder has very specific elements that must be met to establish murder. So how do we fix this? Sad to say we don't, at least not immediately and not in my lifetime. Unfortunately, sensation sells, um, fear sells even more. The media and our ignorance to understand the divisiveness that they will always try to create will continue to keep us as sheep. 
but we have to hold poor training and poor decision making accountable and truly accountable. We also can't jump to immediate conclusions after every officer involved incident is brought to light because the edited version is nowhere near objective. I'm not comparing the two because I think that would be disrespectful, but just like I'm ignorant to heart surgery procedures or chemist procedures, most civilians are ignorant to police practices because there are circumstances we're just not immediately aware of. And then there's things as obvious as Mr. Floyd's death. There's no justifying, no defending what occurred. Excuse me, to the officers that allow that to happen, shame on you. Shame on you for being meek and not having enough confidence as a man to swallow your pride and do the right thing. For every step forward we, we make with building bridges within the community, these instances set us back tenfold. But I'm willing to stay in the fight and continue to do my part. Now, I know this opens myself up to a lot of criticism, but know that it comes from a good place. Um, to my Compton folks, everything I do in this job, I do it with you in mind, and that's real talk. And to my law enforcement folks, um, we got this. Um, we can turn this thing around. Yeah. Just keep making steps, taking steps forward. But get home self every day. I'm Sergeant Robert Nelson. And the video that you just saw was at the request of some family and friends just to show my perspective on the situation that occurred back in Minneapolis. Since that time, however, I've gotten tremendous support and encouragement from my family and friends regarding the message in the video, and we saw it suit to share with the public. I'm pretty optimistic about the future between law enforcement and the community. I think there's a bridge to gap, and I think through messages and communication like this, we'll be able to do that. Thank you for taking the time to listen to that message. Thanks, Rob. I got to tell you, when I first viewed this video, uh, I was floored. Uh, it, it was emotional. I could see the emotion in Rob's face. And uh, as I said earlier, I couldn't be more proud of what Rob did. He stuck his neck out thinking it might be against policy just because it was for the greater good. So with that, this is the first in a series of videos we're gonna share with the community. Uh, the next few videos will include comments from the public to the police department, uh, an introduction of police department staff to the public, or I should say a reintroduction. Uh, we're gonna talk about all the community engagement and community events that we participate with our community. Um, we're gonna have our elected officials and our city manager come in and say hello and share their thoughts and perspectives. And finally, in the video series, we're gonna try to put together some type of virtual town hall meeting where you, the community, can write to us and ask us questions and we can respond to them as best as we can on camera. Obviously, we're doing this because of the restrictions of the pandemic. The goal is to use this as a kickoff in what we hope will be open communication and open dialogue between the Custom Police Department and the community that last years. Thank you for taking the time to be with us.